sous vide is kind of like slow cooking no kind of like it is a slow cooking method it is not going you're not going to be cooking anything any faster in the sous vide so know that up front hey yo this is dash yeah, yeah. Hey yo, this is Dash, and uh, I'm in the kitchen today, and I'll put up a video of me using these uh, sous vide, the Anova Precision Cooker, the sous vide. I put up a video about that, um, I actually put it up yesterday, and I had a couple questions in that, you know, people, a couple concerns, so I wanted to talk about them, um, and uh, show you guys actually more about it. I will be completely honest, I was way too excited when I got the uh, sous vide and basically got something to cook in it that I I kind of screwed the pooch in the last video and I apologize for being so um, unexplanatory. Is that a good way to say it? I didn't really, I didn't explain what it does and, and, and uh, what it is well enough. But I've had it for, I guess going on three weeks now. And hey look, there it is right there, hanging out in the background. I've had it going on uh, three weeks now, and I've I've cooked a plethora of different things in it. And no, this I haven't uh, filmed any other videos aside from the one that you saw. But I wanted to talk about it and some of the things I've learned so far. It's a pretty steep learning curve, or you know, steep learning curve. Um, and um, let me talk about it. So let me first show you what the sous vide is and what it looks like. This is the Anova Precision Cooker. All right, so. And you see the menu here or the display is rather sparse but this dial will allow you to, to set your temperature now the whole thing is what this is is inside of this metal column there's a, a heating element a little like a little uh, it's not even a pump because it's just a dial or something that spins like a propeller or impeller actually and a probe to, to, to tell you what the temperature inside of your water bath is. So the way this works is like, let's say, all right, I turn it on and that's it. That's as loud as it gets. Now I'll talk about some of the stuff that you see here in a moment, but that's it. It's not very loud. It's not very, you know, obtrusive or anything like that. Um, now, one of the things that I will say, <clears throat> obviously, this water has been sitting in the, and this water has been sitting in the uh, in this tub overnight. So that's why it was at 71 degrees. Um, what you should do or would want to do is fill this with hot water from your, you know, from your tap, right? The water from your tap is going to come out at about 120 degrees plus or minus, depending on how you have your hot water heater set up. Um, and it's okay, you know, that's that. Now, the first couple of times I cooked in, in <coughs> with the sous vide, I used a, um, a, a pot, okay? A metal pot, and that was fine. I didn't have any issues. I've heard some complaints about the, the, the you know, the clasp or the, the uh, mounting mechanism. I didn't have any problems with that. But because I have access to the Restaurant Depot, I actually went to the Restaurant Depot and picked up this uh, 12 quart Cambro, um, I don't know, a container. It actually, I actually got a lid. And, you know, don't mind the destroyed lid because I wanted it to fit like this. Um, it'll help keep down evaporation. Um, and um, so like if I wanted to leave the water in here, um, it would help keep down the evaporation, but by the time you worry about evaporation, I could have just poured this out and I'd have started this. Um, if you're worried about evaporation, uh, not necessarily while it's not cooking, but while it is cooking. Um, but the whole thing is, I could have started with warmer water and then it wouldn't be struggling to get where, you know, up to where it is. Now, this down here, is actually something I saw when I was looking for like reviews and other things like that from Amazon. This is a pot holder from Ikea. Now obviously you can get it from Ikea, but they, you know, it is available via Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below because I saw it. 
This Cambro container can also be found on Amazon or one like it. It's it's a it's a hard plastic. Um, and there's there's you know, I'm I'm pretty much only using this container to cook in um, for the with the sous vide. Uh, if I have something that's bigger than this, like if I'm cooking more like some steaks, um, then I will eventually, or not eventually, then I will get a bigger pot and cook in the big pot and, you know, go from there. All right, so let me talk, tell you about the things that I've cooked so far. So the first thing I cooked was a ribeye steak. And honestly enough, I was kind of on the fence about it. Actually, before I do that, I had someone mention, you know, cooking in plastic. All right, because the chemicals and the plastic will leach out into your food and X, Y, and Z and this, that, and the other. Well, the good thing about um, plastic companies as of late is they are labeling everything and they are ensuring that things are BPA free. BPA free, okay? Um, with the like the plastic water containers and you know all of those drinking vessels and things like that. You know, you don't want to have um, a BPA in the plastic because there are certain things that will leach into your food. That being said, I made sure the, the bags that I'm cooking in because I'm, I don't have a vacuum sealer um, just yet and I'm just cooking in um, like Ziploc bags or, you know, store brand Ziploc type bags uh, with like a slide lock just to make it easier for it to close. Um, I made sure that they were BPA free. So that in case you had a concern about that. Now, um, talking more about the usage of the sous vide. So, um, I have used the sous vide, I won't say extensively, but I've used it like six or seven times in the two weeks, three weeks that I've had it. Okay, so where was I? Um, I was talking about things I've cooked in the sous vide so far. So, golly. So many notifications and buzzes and beeps going off. Uh, it's pretty early in the morning, so I'm trying to get ready for work. Uh, but I wanted to film this really quickly so that I could uh, probably do a quick, and, uh, quick and dirty edit and get it up to explain some of the things that you saw in the video from yesterday. All right. Uh, the ribeye steak, the bone and ribeye steak. I was saying that um, I wish it had more flavor. Now I could have done one of two things. I could have like marinated it, okay, but I'm not really at all that big of a fan of marinating um, meats just because I typically don't have to or I, you know, I don't. What I probably should have done is let it cook in the sous vide a little longer. I only let it cook for about an hour. Now, when you notice I cut into that steak, there were some portions of the steak that were more rare, and there were other portions of the steak that were more like medium. Honestly, I was going for a more rare, and what I think the problem was when I was cooking in the pot, I didn't have anything to hold the steak in, you know, in place. Uh, so that's why I have that the the Cambro uh, container as well as the um, the pot organizer from IKEA. So what I ended up think what I think happened being hindsight being 2020, I think the steak was a little too close to the heating element, and that's why it was a little more medium than it was rare. Okay, um, I wanted to cook it like a perfect you know medium rare, and the whole thing is you can set the temperature. To what you want it to be um you can look at like any meat guideline or any temperature guideline and it'll tell you 127 to 109 is going to be like a rare 132 degrees and these are all fahrenheit by the way it's going to be like a, a a mid rare and then the medium is going to be like 135 degrees and then so on and so forth you shouldn't cook your steak past medium anyway so let's not even talk about that but <clears throat> After I cooked that steak, I cooked a uh, a bottom round roast. Now, I'm not a big fan of roast beef. Guess what it came out tasting like? Roast beef. And it wasn't bad. It definitely wasn't bad. It's, I, again, I wanted more flavor. I, you know, I like the flavor of beef when I want to have the flavor of beef, but there are certain things that I just want to have some additional seasoning. That's the whole point of us figuring out what things tasted well with what in my opinion, all right? 
So that was the rib roast. Um, then the next thing I cooked, I cooked a couple more steaks. Now these steaks I actually seasoned and let them sit for a day or so. The problem was the seasoning that I used, I did not care for. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was experimenting with a new seasoning and I, I didn't like it. My wife didn't like it either. The kids were like, yay, it was steak and they were happy about the steak. Um, Next thing I cooked was, oh, I made Juicy Lucy burgers. If you don't know what a Juicy Lucy is, it's a burger that has cheese inside. They turned out fantastic. My wife, my kids love them, okay? My wife pretty much said that her burger, because I made her burger out of turkey and not um, beef, because she's been on the fence about eating as much beef, and she had steak like a day before, so I'm like, I can't do steak two days in a row. All right, so she turned, She said it turned out like a little mini meatloaf. And I was like, ah, that's a good idea to basically make like a burger patty and put it into the sous vide and make it like a mini meatloaf. And now with the um, Juicy Lucy, I, I seared them to finish. Um, the roast, I didn't sear it. Uh, and the, the steaks, I've always seared those, uh, just in case you were wondering. Uh, what's the nice thing I cooked? I feel like I cooked something else. Oh, I cooked a turkey breast. And actually, I think I cooked the whole turkey breast prior to me cooking the Juicy Lucy's. I did. I cooked the turkey breast early in the in the week that I cooked it. And then I cooked the Juicy Lucy's, Juicy Lucy's later. Now, the turkey breast was a bone-in turkey breast, a full turkey breast. Um, and it turned out great. I cooked it to 160 degrees. And uh, you know, one of the things that I, I've, I've learned since is the reason why we cook things to a certain temperature is to help kill bacteria and to stop the growth of bacteria. Because you're cooking something at a, or in a water bath for an extended period of time, you're more or less pasteurizing your food. And because you're pasteurizing it, you have to keep it at a maintain a certain um, temperature for a certain period of time and that will do the same effect of cooking it to whatever the USDA you know food safe temperature guidelines are um, as opposed to doing it instantaneously by taking chicken or whatever to 165 degrees you are actually going to be doing it over time um, by pasteurizing it more or less all right so fun fact um that's why you can cook things to a lower temperature and them still be um uh food safe all right now i cooked the turkey breast and then i cooked it you know rather late in the evening and then i could just kind of throw it in a refrigerator the next day i cut the, the breast meat off of the bone sliced it up put it in a bag and then reheated it. Put it in the, in the sous vide for at 140 degrees. When I say it turned out perfect, perfect, okay? Then I was smart enough to actually take some sides that I had in the refrigerator already and also put them into the sous vide. So everything was done at the same exact time. Awesome, it was awesome, okay? Then I cooked the Juicy Lucy's. I've already told you about the Juicy Lucy's. That was uh, pretty good. And then I wanted to start experimenting with other things. So I cooked, you know, of course I cooked steaks and a lot of people suggest cooking steaks. Um, eggs. Ugh. I can eat a rare steak, but I will not eat a runny egg. All right, don't ask me, just, just let that one go and we'll go from there. But a lot of people cook eggs in a sous vide because you can get them perfectly uh, soft boiled. If, if you, if that's, that's your thing, like a runny yolk, not my thing at all. The next thing and the last thing that I cooked, I actually cooked last night. Um, I cooked some shrimp. Now I use one of the recipes from Anova's, um, like the, the app. And you know, the app is, is pretty good. Um, there, there are some decent recipes in there. All you have to do is search for the uh, protein that you're using or the meat that you're using or whatever the, the base of your meal is going to be. And you can usually find a recipe. So I found a recipe that I liked for sriracha. I think it was like sriracha citrus shrimp or something like that. But it was the 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 main point was it was sriracha. And I didn't have to do much work of anything because I had all the materials or I had all of the ingredients at home already, with the exception of shrimp. Um, 
when I pick my kids up from school in the afternoons, a lot of times I'll ask them, hey, what do you guys want for dinner tonight? And you know, I'm like a short order cook sometimes. Um, so that night, or you know, last night, they said that they wanted shrimp. So I bought two pounds of shrimp from the market because it was on sale. And I came home, um, peeled it. It was already deveined. You know, I only get the the, uh, the easy peel and devein shrimp. I peeled it, and I made the sriracha. It was like a sriracha butter um, sauce, if you will. And I put it all in the bag, dropped it in the water. Oh my gosh, it was perfect. Now, when I say it was perfect, I liked it. Um, it had very good, good flavor. And the problem though, and this is one of the things that you have to take into consideration when you're cooking with a sous vide. Um, sous vide is kind of like slow cooking. No kind of like, it is a slow cooking method. It is not going, you're not going to be cooking anything any faster in the sous vide. So know that up front. Uh, that being said, it's not for everybody. Um, my wife, she is one of those people that wants her food to burn her mouth when she eats it. Me, not so much. Um, so the problem she has is she says everything comes out of the sous vide cold. And I'm like, it's not cold. It, it's cooked like the shrimp. I cooked the shrimp to 135 degrees, okay? The shrimp was warm but it wouldn't burn your mouth. She wanted it to burn her mouth, okay? So, you know, certain things, if you want to, and, and this is a fine line, the whole thing is, the point of the sous vide is so that you can cook things a different method. And this method of cooking might not be for her, it might not be the best for her for cooking other things aside from steak. She said, of course, or aside from cooking things that have to be seared, which will give it extra heat. And that extra heat is what she appreciated. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know, probably should have like, I didn't script this or anything. I'm really just talking off, off the top of my head if you couldn't tell by my ramblings and other things like that. But hopefully that offers just a slight bit of insight um, as to some of the things that I've done already. Um, obviously, most people use this to cook steak perfectly. And if you're cooking for a large group, I, I, was, I was watching something and a gentleman I was talking, he said, you know, he was talking about how he had, you know, 10 people or if you were having 10 or 15 people. How difficult is it to cook 10 or 15 steaks perfectly? If you have a big enough sous vide or a big enough bath for your sous vide, you can cook all of those steaks perfectly and then all you have to do is sear them and you can sear a steak in, you know, in, in, in a matter of no time, you know, 30 seconds to a minute per side with, with good grill marks or whatever the case may be and you'll be good to go. So those things being said, um, please, please, please leave me some questions down below about the sous vide and or things you would like to see cooked. Um, because obviously this is a new toy and I haven't, uh, usually I haven't, or the reason why I haven't filmed me cooking more is because my kids are typically around and they're making a whole bunch of noise because they're doing their homework while I'm trying to get dinner done. So if you could, uh, like I said, leave a comment down below with any other questions you have and or any other um, things you'd like to see cooked uh, via sous vide. All right. Thank you very much for uh, watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit that thumbs up. I'll see you next time.